A very warm welcome to all of you. So we would be starting with a series of expected questions. Today we would be covering the questions on environment. In the next class we would be covering the questions on polity. So stay tuned for both the lectures. If you are not subscribed, you can just click the subscribe button so that you will receive the notifications for the upcoming videos. Now the first two topics that we would be covering under it have been asked in the recent examination for the UPSC mains 2017 and are very very important for your net examination as well. The first of which is the national year for the pulses which has been declared as 2016. Now why pulses are important? We would be understanding that in a summary. So what basically pulses does, the main idea is they have a kind of important role to play for nitrogen fixation. As a result, they would reduce the demand for any kind of synthetic nitrogen fertilizers that is required. So what the statistics tell is 85 billion plants have a capacity to fix nearly 3.6 million tons of nitrogen in the soil. Again, this, uh, these pulses have the capability to decrease the methane emission from the remnants of the animals because they improve the food conversion ratio in most of the animals and the plants. Therefore, they affect the climate change. So what is happening basically is ultimately less nitrogen is being released into the atmosphere and you have less of greenhouse gases that would occur. So growing on more pulses is a kind of beneficial effort in this direction. The next is cryosphere, very very important. Cryosphere is the layer of snow and ice that is found towards the pole. Now why it is important? This layer as has a very high reflective capability. So what would happen is as soon as you have the sunlight falling it on it, it would reflect out. So it would not allow the sun rays to percolate in and therefore it would limit the amount of global warming that is taking place. First of all, the second important thing is the latent heat that is associated with the phase changes. So this ice cap cover on the north and the south pole of India, of the sorry, world map is very very important and it helps basically in regulating the global climate. So th these two questions were directly from what we have discussed are directly from the uh, UPSC examination, the mains paper, the recent paper. Now we would be to uh, talking about some of the other major topics. The first is the carbon sequestration. Carbon sequestration is the process by which the open carbon dioxide is basically buried into the ground and that carbon dioxide which is buried into the ground can be used as a future energy resource. Again, since it's buried, it would reduce the amount of greenhouse gases that is going into the atmosphere and decrease the amount of carbon footprints. The next is the pollution index. In India, we have a kind of four color scheme for determining the pollution index that's red, orange, green and white. Sometimes there could be a direct question which of those colors is not a part of the pollution index. So red means severely polluting, white means least polluting. <clears throat> the next is Xenia. Xenia is the first flower to be planted in the space and this was planted uh, using the artificial LED light from the red, blue and green LED sources to simulate the natural sunlight behavior. The next is International Solar Alliance, very very important. So what happens is around the equator you have 23 degrees north and south and this whole range is known as the range of tropical nations. Under this area you have nearly 121 countries which are part of the International Solar Alliance lying in the tropical belt. All these 121 nations have ample potential to utilize solar energy and use it as one of the major sources of energy. In India, you have numerous solar plants that are coming up. This solar energy could be used for lightening the streets, for lightening the houses, for small scale industries and so on. Nowadays, you have solar and wind auctions that are taking place that means the suppliers are bidding for the lowest price so the one that gives out the lowest price is selected for supplying the energy for example under wind energy you have nearly 2.65 which is the recent bid that is going solar again you have the range from 2 to 3 rupees per kilowatt <clears throat> the next is in the wind there are four major companies under the name of inox green infra, orange Sion, and then you have renew power. So those have been working for the wind energy auctions. 
So these sources of renewable energy, their targets for 2022 again very important. You have six solid waste managements that are important. Those are in the form of e-waste, biomedical waste, the construction and the demolition waste, hazardous waste and the plastic waste. Now under the plastic waste you have more than 15,000 tons that is generated per day of which only 9,000 tons is collected. The, the rest is not e even able to be collected because it's mixed with the other waste. 17 states in India have brought a complete ban onto the plastic bags, the polythene bags and NGT that's the National Green Tribunal again very very important so just read about NGT. So NGT has brought a ban on use of non-biodegradable plastic bags which are less than 50 microns so they cannot be biodegraded and therefore they are not allowed and have been banned by NGT specifically in Delhi and a fine of 5000 has been uh, put up for those not using for those using that plastic under the plastic you have three ranges degradable biodegradable and compostable so compostable is the best plastic we can say and it is made from uh, let's say the cornstarch and therefore it can be composted biodegradable is made of biopolymers and therefore it's known as biodegradable plastic the next is impact of climate change now climate change is a very important phenomenon it's been said that the extremities in the weather phenomena which used to occur every hundred years have a potential to occur every 10 years if the same climate change goes on Kolkata and Mumbai are the most vulnerable areas which would be flooded under climate change and there has been a significant drop in the crop productivity except for sugarcane which has seen an increase during the time of climate change. Most of the crops have seen a net decrease in the yield or productivity. Most of the areas where you have frequent floods or erratic rainfall coming up, vector borne diseases have increased. These vector borne diseases are in the form of malaria, chikungunya, dengue. So all these are vector borne diseases. Malaria is important because we have the national strategy for elimination of malaria that has been released. We have a target for total elimination by 2027 and the first phase by 2022. Uh, you have uh, most of the states that are working for the eradication of malaria and malaria is a vector borne disease. Under uh, malaria you have two um, species that cause the malaria. One is Plasmodium vivax which is seen in the plain area and the other is Plasmodium falciparum which is mainly seen in the forest areas. So these two species uh, lead to, these two are the vectors which lead to malaria. We have discussed that later so we have covered it right away. Now again uh, this climate change is said to have heavier rainfall, uh, increase in the sea level and increase in the fresh water supply. Now some of the important programs that have been released recently and are important for your net examination. The first is global wildlife program. It has three major objectives. First is to reduce any kind of poaching, reduce any kind of trafficking and reducing the demand for the wild animals. So wildlife conservation and sustainable development with crime prevention is the basic idea. It aims to impart knowledge and coordinate on the on ground action plans. The next is GEF that is Global Environmental Facility very very important 183 nations are already part of it and it works around the global environmental issues. It was established as a result of earth summit to tackle the environmental problems. Kyoto protocol we have already covered in a separate lecture. Uh, so just refer that here we are talking about India which has become the 80th country to accept the amendments which talk about the second commitment. So there were two commitment periods to reduce the greenhouse gas. The first was from 2008 to 2012 and the second is from 2013 to 2020 and India is basically working around the second commitment period. The next important thing that you need to know is the Kigali agreement uh, amendment. Now Kigali is very very important. It would come into force in 2019 January. The idea is nearly 197 nations have been working around to reduce the hydrofluorocarbons 
and these hydrofluorocarbons are aimed to be reduced by 85 percent by 2045 so that's the idea or the aim we set to achieve india has piloted two major concepts for the same the first is the concept of two baseline and a kind of differentiated phase down time schedule so both of these are very very important and for the first time in montreal protocol you have a concept of two baselines that have been adopted for both the developing and the developed nations dichloromethane again very important dichloromethane basically what it does is it delays the recovery of ozone hole now naturally it is seen in the oceans volcanoes and the microalgae but the artificial sources are primarily the paint strippers and the degreaser uh, de degreasers so both of these are the major sources for dichloromethane the role of dichloromethane the impact on ozone and the substances that lead to amount of the dichloromethane in atmosphere are very very important the next is under ministry of railways we are working forward for an indian railway organization for alternative fuel what this organization does is, is basically is a kind of research ideas which are being propounded for environmental friendly railways now what we know is pha that's polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and heavy metals are found in huge quantities in the area surrounding the railways now this polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons are known to cause cancers so basically they are carcinogenic and they are also mutagenic that means they cause mutation in the genetic code of an individual so these two are being said to be reduced under the efforts led by the alternative fuel organization so idea is moving from diesel to cng and lng and this has been tried in the demo rails the next is promoting biodiesel uh, promoting solar pan paneling for the rooftops so lighting in the railways would be through solar panel bio waste could be used as a source of energy methanol as an alternative using hydrogen based fuels is a kind of technology we are working around and these are some of the things that we are focusing under cleaner railways we can say so 5% bio bio blend is again a basic idea that we are working around the next is national wildlife action plan that was in news recently uh, the third national wildlife action plan has been laid forward and it has a target period from 2017 to 2031 the idea is to ban any kind of a uh, certain kind of activities in the forest areas to check out the tourism regulate the tourism bring in strict laws for enforcement and rehabilitate any kind of threatened species the next is project varshadhari Uh, this is a project that has been launched in Karnataka for artificial rainfall through cloud seeding. So you have the idea of artificial rainfall, and that is caused mainly by silver iodide, sodium chloride, and potassium chloride. The next is under the Global Innovation Index. The top performing nations are Switzerland, followed by Sweden and Netherlands. Sometimes you have the direct ranking that is asked. Again, very important. solar panels being installed in india the highest install installed capacity is seen in andhra pradesh followed by gujarat followed by karnataka again very important the next is national adaptation fund for climate change launched in 2015 implemented by nabard the idea is to adopt programs bring bring in climatic change and capacity building the three states that have been worked around as sikkim for climate change rajasthan for water conservation and gujarat you have the uh, natural dependent community in the areas of kutch so the livelihood of those communities to be revived the next is biomethane now that this has been brought about as the bio cng bus which has an active ingredient as biomethane and this was first released by tata motors at the urja utsav what basically happens is from the household in the sewerage you have the anaerobic digestion that takes place in the absence of air if it is aerobic it is in the presence of air if it is anaerobic it's in the absence of oxygen so in the absence of oxygen you have anaerobic digestion that takes place and you have biogas that is produced this biogas provides energy to this process as well as is the households and also power the various vehicles so biomethane is a new substitute we are looking forward for 
we have already talked about the phase and the ideas and the malaria uh, eradication we have talked about the idea of cleaner railways now coming on to the next important topic is the complete ban on some of the substances being used in the fireworks it's really important and this has been laid down by pesco that is petroleum and explosive safety organization so some of the elements that have been banned are zinc because zinc affects the blood and causes blood toxicity then you have cadmium affecting lungs and kidneys lead and mercury affecting the nervous system arsenic basically affecting liver and causing cancer in lungs skin bladder and kidney lithium causing muscle weakness and fatigue and antimony affecting eye skin and lungs so sometimes there could be a direct question which element affects which part of the body and which is an active constituent of the fireworks so far so that is again very important sagarwani is a new effort by government of india where we are trying to work around the cyclone alert so we have divided it under four stages stage 1 2 3 4 the first is the pre cyclonic watch the next is the cyclone alert which is issued by yellow the cyclone warning issued by orange and the post landfall outlook given by red so the color codes the names and the stages very very important green climate fund comes under unfcc uh, it basically works around to counter the climate change problems it is headquartered in incheon in south korea the next important crop is castor now why castor is important castor has the unique capability to fix heavy metals or it absorbs the heavy metals what happens as a result of it is the soil pollution caused by heavy metals is decreased and this castor has numerous uses it's used for skin treatment problems of arthritis joint pain colic pain used in cosmetics and skin uh, skin components so basically what we are trying to do is mainly along the railways where you have more of heavy metals that are seen you are trying to plant plant more of uh, castor seeds the next is the national afforestation program again very important so we would be talking about some of the topics that are really very important and you must cover those so national afforestation program then you have green india mission it talks about increasing the forest cover by 5 million hectare and in another 5 million hectare we aim to improve the tree cover quality the next is interlinking of rivers recently three interlinking of rivers have been proposed so it's kane betwa kaman uh, daman ganga pinjal then you have par tapi and narmada all of those are mentioned here so it's important iucn classification we have taken in a separate lecture very important biodiversity often on you have one or two questions so biodiversity is again important we have already covered some of the other classes on expected questions on environment so there are three classes that we have already covered so just go through those uh, so you would have a kind of broader ideas on the contemporary topics we have covered nearly 30 environmental conventions again very important then you have some of the list of major pollutants you can either refer the postal codes by exam rays for this or any other source that you have and based on that you must have a list from where these pollutants come so basically the sources of those pollutants and the impacts on the human health so pollutants of nitrogen sulfur carbon lead then you have suspended particulates all those are very very important and then there are some topics under the solid waste management like solid urban waste segregation the wet waste the dry waste then you have waste to wealth which is a pretty new concept so it's a kind of new way we are looking for generation of renewable source of energy so far only 0.2% has been of uh, 0.2% of renewable energy comes from waste to wealth so what we are trying to do is we are trying to utilize the waste and generate energy or electricity uh, energy basically fuel out of it then carbon trading global warming and greenhouse effects again very very important topics eesl that's energy efficient service limited uh, again very important because it has been supplying the led bulbs these led bulbs on the same wattage are more energy efficient 
what happens as a result of it is the carbon footprint is decreased and the energy consumption is also decreased. So going towards uh, LED bulbs is a new alternative that we are looking forward with. So these are some of the major topics that we have talked about in the class on expected questions on environment. In the next class we would be talking about the expected questions on polity. If you are subscribed you would receive the notifications for the same. If not you can definitely watch that at our channel. Uh, have a very good day ahead. Uh, do prepare for your exam thoroughly. These are some of the topics that we have mentioned basic, basically the contemporary topics which are really important for your upcoming examination. So stay tuned for further updates and a very good luck for your examination. Have a good day ahead.